Have you ever been curious about diesel heaters or even heard of diesel heaters for the interior of a trailer, RV, or rig, van, whatever? And this is something I ran across a couple of years ago and have been intrigued with and curious about, but two, three years ago when I started building my rig, the really, really the only options at that point were an SPAR or a, I forget the other name of the company, but they were like six and $700 for these heaters. Well, last winter, the prices dropped down to about 250 and this winter, they dropped even further. So I bought a diesel heater, pulled the trigger here this last week, $106. So this video, I'm going to do an unboxing and install and show you what the diesel heater is all about. Uh, my box just arrived and there is a lot of stuff probably i don't know 20 30 parts in there and i'm starting with the manual going through here um, it is apparent that this was written probably in chinese would be my guess and some of the english in here you really have to use your imagination to figure out what they're saying as far as the words and the terminology that they're using but if you muscle through it, I think it's well worth it in putting up with the hassle of the uh, difficult manual here. So my friend Badge is going to be helping me out with the install today. He's installed apparently dozens and dozens of these heaters. We're planning on tapping into the main fuel tank of the diesel here in this vehicle. I'm in a step van or Grumman Olsen step van which runs on diesel. Over here is my front door and you go in and there is a bench seat here so I have the top lid propped open and my plan is to install the diesel heater right here on the floor underneath the bench. So we're going to run a fuel line from here to the back of the van and that will supply the fuel there and then we have to drill a hole in the floor down for the air intake and for the exhaust. Here is the box I picked up from the post office. I purchased this off of eBay. I'll put a link down below. It was $106 including shipping. Prices might be higher or lower as you're viewing this video. But anyway, you can check the link below. And I'll put the keywords down there just in case this particular vendor is no longer selling it. You can just do your own eBay search and find the same thing. So inside we have a fuel tank here that you can use and you can run it off of gasoline or kerosene or diesel and then this is the unit down here the actual heater itself is probably about the size of a loaf of bread and it comes with a uh, control unit and then I think it has uh, some sort of little key dongle thing which I don't know that I carry this around on my keychain but anyway, you have a remote control and thermostat, which is absolutely amazing. We've started the install, and so Badge is uh, crawled underneath here, and he's doing the mounting and positioning. Let me show you what's going on there. We drilled a pilot hole right here, you can see, and this is the plate, so that's where it's going to fit. And here's the unit itself. And I am in the middle of wiring this. I have wired the controls up to here, so this is the control and thermostat. This unit can come off of here and I just made the wires go down the side. Right now I'm running the main power wire which goes up here and it's going to go up there and then across and now I've got to wire it into my fuse box over here on this side. So that's what I'm working on. I'm doing electric wiring today using my crimpers here and these tools and Badge is outside and he is working underneath to do the install. Mr. Badge, you have any words of wisdom for this? This is like diesel? the old home week. Yeah, there you go. Does that look familiar? That looks familiar. Um, words of wisdom? No, just we're gonna get her done. That's all I can tell you. It's gonna be a nice day in the neighborhood, I think. Get you some more heat. Seven likes heat. I tell people that I have Goldilocks syndrome. That I like the temperature to be just right, not too hot not too cold just like the storybook with goldilocks and the three bears she likes things to be just right that's how i treat my temperature i don't like having cold hands or feet 
badge has a mat here underneath my step van set up so that the rocks are not grinding into his back. So he's willing to crawl under there and do the drilling and mounting underneath. And we're going to tap in to the fuel line to feed this thing. Mr. Badge is cutting holes in my floor. Yeah, we're cutting holes. It's got to be good. You know, the funny part about this 7 is all these tools that I'm using, yeah. somebody gave me them. Oh, yeah. All that, that yellow does. stuff. I don't know who that'd be, but I... It does look you know, familiar. Yeah, I know. So, yeah, so we cut this floor out. And this is the template. This is what the heater sits on, right? You have to use this. So if you got carpet or anything, you have to use this plate. And it just goes right on there with the heater. And then you just take four screws out and poof, it comes right out. You don't have to go underneath. So that's why we do that way. So yeah. Looks good. Just like that. You don't even have to cut any holes. They're all right there. And the good thing about that, you don't have to cut holes through the floor to match this plate because you cut the floor out. So you just bolt this to it, four bolts, and it goes down on the heater. Easy as pie. Now you're going to probably say, well, because that notch there is for the fuel line to come through. The power wires for the fuel line. That's what that's for. So you get your fuel line wires, which are right here, and the harness is right here, and just put that through there. Okay, I just finished all my wiring, ran it down here, through here, and plugged into this. I used the exact same fuse that came with it right here in the fuse box. And this is my wire that I just put in. And here is the negative ground over here. So everything's looking great here. And it goes up and around over here, across and down there, and across there over to the unit. And as you can see here, I now have live power on the unit, on the display face. So it's looking good. Badge has the heater unit installed here and it's on the plate and everything's wired up. It's ready to go. We just have to get fuel to it. By the way, my next task is to figure out where I'm going to place the vent. It's probably right here on this back side here. Going to drill a circular hole and then put the nozzle vent there so that it can direct the airflow. I'm making progress. I took my saber saw and I cut a hole for the vent system. And I think the last step is just to get fuel off the fuel line into the unit itself and then just uh, secure everything and we're good to go. Let me show you the vent I put in. Still need to clean up the sawdust here, but you can see the little vent and it's right here on the front of the bench. I had to pull off one of these um, rustic barnwood things there to fit it in, but I think I'll just uh, put it back on later as I get everything in place. And we have the connector hose hooked up connecting these two. We're going to secure this down here. Badge has been investigating underneath looking at the fuel lines trying to figure out where to tap in. We decided to wait and go into the auto parts store nearby and look for a T connector so that we can easily tap into the fuel line because my fuel line is so much bigger than a normal fuel line and so we got to get a special T connector to be able to tap into that. So we're not going to be able to finish this today. We're going to wait until he's going in for parts for other projects, grab that T connector and come back and wrap this up. Well, that's all I have for this episode for part one. I guess you'll have to uh, come back and look again for part two to see the ongoing progress and finishing up with the install and testing the unit. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Savor the moment, and I'll see you in a future video.